Welcome back to Open House with Mark Sewick and Corey James Moran, brought to you by Elysian Homes by Mark Sewick and Associates, a greater Rochester real estate podcast. This is episode 162. Mark, yeah. what's going on? I, I, everything. A and lot of things are going on. A lot of things are going on. Some but, good, not some uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah, so good. You know, yeah. But on balance, on balance it's, it's a beautiful day. Sure. Fall is really here. Have you noticed how late it is taking for leaves to actually change color. I this just year. had a conversation with a client about this literally yesterday. Oh, really? They were very upset. Oh, really? Why is that? Because they want to. They want to see the leaves. My uh, actually, oh, yeah. my parents are going to be in town. My parents live in Endicott, yeah. New York, a couple hours away yeah. from us. They uh, they are coming in to I think today actually they wanted to go leaf peeping. Oh, oh in, wow. at Letchworth. Oh, wow. State Park. Um, not yeah. a ton to see. A lot of green it's, stuff. It's, it's, yeah, a lot of green. One of Duffy's cousins reached out to me through uh, social media, um, and she's very, very, very excited about the leaves. She's coming in next week uh, for, I mean, we, we have a, a, a Palmer family reunion, you know, uh, two, three, four times a year. Okay. There's um, there's a couple cousins, right? A, a couple, yeah. So, like, you know, I, I mean, Hundred. literally, like, hundreds of people to send upon the house two or three times a year for the latest uh faction of the family but but you know what i love each and every one of them they're such amazing people but anyway uh, tony was um uh hoping to enjoy some leaves so hopefully when she's in town next week from georgia hopefully there uh, we go yeah, yeah, i didn't okay. realize until probably the last few years that it's like a tourist attraction oh yeah yeah i mean there's really no I mean, everybody wants to like flock to new england you know in, in october why yeah i mean it's old and busted yeah, what's that? It's old and busted. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, we, we, there, there is so much to enjoy in the Finger Lakes on this time of year. I agree. So Agreed. great. Oh, and actually, one last thing before we... I'm hoping, so we go down to our place in Hammondsburg tomorrow. I, I think I've told you before, maybe not. There is one day of the year when I pull into our driveway, I open the car door, and it smells as if I have been dipped into a vat of Welch's grape juice. Oh, that's awesome. Because all of the, all the grape farmers have been harvesting and pressing their grapes... And That's very cool. It is so intoxicating. Can you get that into a candle? Oh my god! It's it's just it's it's really yeah, maybe an aerosol. Yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. So what's in the podcast for today? We got a lot going on. Um, a remarkable team stat from September for our listings. We'll talk about right. um, what's happening with housing affordability. Some good news. Okay. Maybe some not so good news. Um, and an agent went peak petty. Before they left their brokerage to open their own. When peak peak petty. As petty. In, pettiness. Ah, the there move we go. They I, pulled, I immediately went to Tom, but no. Oh, no. No, no, no. No, okay. not Tom Petty. Okay. Peak pettiness. This thing they did. Wow. So we'll get to that more. Uh, okay. First, market update. You ready? Uh, 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 yeah. It's actually not awful, I guess. When we do these, uh, just pulling the curtain back, it's Friday now. Mm -hmm. So we typically record on a Wednesday. There's going to be less. There's going to be less on a Wednesday than there is on a Friday because Wednesday, Thursday are two of the biggest days for new right, listings. Right, yeah. um, but still not a dramatic increase. 515 last week, we're at 533 right now. So we actually have oh. seen a slight uptick okay, okay. from Monroe County. This is what's really interesting, right? So mm -hmm. that's Monroe County, single family active homes. Yeah. Six county region, 915 last week, 910 right now. Wow. So wow. six county region overall, we're down. Down slightly, yeah. Yep. Um, under contract and pending, down just a bit. Monroe County was 1109. Last week, we're at 1102 right now for this six county region, down a little bit more. Uh, 1721 last week, we're at 1705 right now. Okay, okay. Um, I, I think at this point, we should talk about you know our September in terms of listings. It, it, it was, it was, I, I, we're doing our part for these numbers. <laughs> okay, I mean, we, we really are. So, go, go ahead. So, this is kind of crazy. We ended up having 26. Properties listed in the month of September. That's incredible. And to really put that into to perspective, I mean, September is always kind of a hit or miss month, I would say. You know, I always say it's a good month for, for, for real estate sales. No, you feel it's hit or miss. Well, when you look at the numbers for our team, last year we had seven listings in the month of September. Well, the year before we had 10 listings in the month of September. This year we had 26. Well, I think that, I, I think it's always a good month. I think that, that this, I think that what happened in September of this year is um, the, it, it pretends what it is that we're going to experience in, uh, in, in all of 2025. Um, I mean, already the phone is, is ringing with clients and prospective clients who want to sell in 2025. And so we've already got, I mean, like, you know, six or eight uh, clients lined up for next year. 
I, th that's something that normally happens um, in November and December, but not in September. So anyway, interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, let's let's hope. Well, and you've said it before, the trends that happen in the market tend to happen to our team a little bit earlier on. Y yes, it, because of the volume, because of the number of buyers that we work with, because of the number of sellers that we work with, uh, it's uh, very. It, we often are bellwethers for uh, for that, that which is to come. So um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm very excited about uh, about 2025, but but. Before we move on, I just we have both Molly and we've got Julie to list more or less one property every single day for the entire month. That's really it's amazing. Yeah, they they crush it. Thank you both very very much. I mean, you, you were you were just incredible. Um, not only did you do it, but you did it um, with panache and kindness and patience and I know that our clients feel very very well cared for so well and it's um, even only more impressive we're throwing a holiday in there in the beginning of September right, right. so top of it. so so if you t if you take that into consideration it really was one property listed per day uh you know uh, post uh, post labor day until uh, until uh, until October 1st it's just remarkable so thank you again let's jump into let's jump into the jobs report before we get into mortgage oh, interest rates God. because this <laughs> A lot of the work that's been done has been undone based on this jobs report. Um, so it came out, it's, it's hot oh, off the, the press. Real. They were expecting 140,000 new jobs, ended up getting 254,000 new jobs. Not only that, they also revised August numbers upward as well. And, and, and I believe they it, it revised July upward also was what I was reading earlier today. Yeah. Not great. What has this done to the mortgage interest rates? Well, well, wait, wait. Before you say that, it's not great depending on what metric you're looking at. Well, true. Yeah. If you're looking at the stock market in general, yeah. If you're looking at the uh, the U.S. economy in the macro, this is great stuff. But as we continue to say, you know, for the past two plus years, uh, two and a half years, that which is seemingly great for the economy is not so great for interest rates and, and by extension, um, the U.S. real estate market. Um, and conversely, um, that which is great for real estate isn't necessarily all that great for uh, for the U.S. economy. So anyway. Uh, before actually I give the numbers, just some more data from that report. Okay. So unemployment rate actually dropped just slightly. We're at 4.1, down from 4.2. Right, right. yeah. um, when you look at, all right, where do these jobs come from? Because it's, it's always interesting to, to take a deep dive into the different sectors. Mm -hmm. yep. um, healthcare yep. was one of the biggest. They had over 71,000 new jobs created. Service, um, leisure, and hospitality. There you go. Yep. Seventy-eight thousand new jobs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so right there, that's that's a big part, yeah. right? I mean, that hits what the expectation was and exceeds <laughs> there it. There you go. Yeah. Um, so you know, good news. Economists do believe that the U.S. economy is on track for that soft landing. Right, so I, yeah, yeah. I guess that's good. Yeah. Um, but obviously now we're back to wondering what's going on with inflation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. All right, so, so I, I'll leave you, you know, for the big reveal in just a moment. But when I checked, I got out of the gym a little bit later today. I checked, I, I, I checked um, CNBC, 10, 15 or thereabouts. And the 10-year Treasury had gone up 100 bips. That's like, that's, that's an anomaly. That's a lot. That's huge. Was your so, phone on fire when you looked at that graph? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, I was driving along and I wasn't holding the. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. All right. Yeah. No so, burns then. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, what has this report done? Um, well, thirty-year last week when we recorded the podcast was at six point two one percent. We're now at six point five three percent. That is. Is this the biggest jump upward that we've seen since we started recording? I think so. I. I it's gonna it's, be close. That's a really great question. I mean, uh, when we're finished with this, I'm just going to uh, fire up ChatGPT and find out when the last time was or how frequently it is um, that, uh, that it, uh, uh, the 30-year mortgage will go up a quarter of a point in one day. I mean, in, in just like that, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this report came out, what, at 8.30 this morning? Yeah, right. Um, five, uh, the 15-year as well is up. It was 5.58 last week. We're at 5.88 Yeah, yeah. right now. Um, yeah, I just um, so, so so I, I write a, a monthly blog, a monthly column for uh, the RBJ, which is being published today. I mean, you can just t torch that article <laughs> because <laughs> so much of one of the things that I said in there, I'm sure, was just like you know uh, inconsequential at this point in time. So um, I mean, it like I said, a lot of the work that's been done has now been undone with one yeah, yeah, job report. Yeah, Here's yeah. 
here's my issue. I don't trust these jobs reports. <laughs> After what happened with the revision of 800,000 plus jobs and the fact that they get revised on a, a monthly basis, yeah. it's, it's a little scary to me that there can be this much movement based off of a report that has shown to be maybe not always the most accurate. Listen, uh, something needs to be done. I mean, it's the year 2024. We get, we get access to all sorts of technology, um, very, very powerful computers. Why is it that they can't, and I, and I can understand at least when jobs reports are being released in January and February, there's a lot of noise because you know the, uh, because the holidays we're coming off the holidays. Sure, yeah. There, there's temporary hiring that that takes place. You know, winter uh, storms and blizzards and winter weather in general uh, can cause wreak havoc uh, in terms of you know shutting down parts of the U.S. economy. Um, you know, sometimes the entire East Coast is you know is just blanketed in snow for you know for five days. So I get all that, but there's no reason why it is that you know in, in the warmer months uh, that, that this kind of uh, discrepancy should, should, should just exist. So. I mean, think of any other industry or any other job where you can be that far off the mark from what your projection is and you well, still well, keep that the, job. The, the, only, the, only one, the only other one that comes to mind? Meteorologist? Yeah, weather. <laughs> Ex exactly. Um, but but, but they're mean, not even this bad. I mean, could you imagine, you know, if surgeons were you sure. like, well, you know, I, yeah. I, I I think the spleen is somewhere it's over here. Somewhere. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, let me take this out. Yeah. Oh, you wanted a heart transplant. <laughs> oh, oh, right. oh, it's the Ugh. left arm. Oh, I'm sorry. We, we, uh, sorry. we amputated the right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just wild. So, okay. Um, CPI is the next really big piece of economic right. yes, data yeah, that we're yeah. going to get. So it's going to be very fascinating where that comes in. Yeah. Um, we still, I, I mean, we're what, about... We're a little shy of a month away from the next meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee. It's going to be really interesting to see uh, the different uh, the different economic reports that are, are released. Um, I think this is going to be an outlier. I, I, I think that the CPI will remain steady, okay. um, if not drop down e even a little bit further. But it's it's definitely it's it's interesting. I mean, there's a possibility that this this might be just a maybe a teensy weensy bit of a drastic overreaction we could think we could see things settle down a little bit later this afternoon potentially i mean because that's a that's a big jump well yeah but then again come on i mean but you know look what the metrics are, are saying look what these numbers are saying the fake numbers 200 <laughs> 254,000 new jobs created in the month of september yeah that's insane it's a big number that's a big yeah number. so so, so the, the reaction doesn't uh, surprise me and i i don't think there's going to be any significant erosion or downward movement of these rates until we see a different economic report, you know, perhaps CPI coming in. Sure. Um, you know, it, it just reaffirming that uh, that inflation is under control or continuing to, uh, to, to mod uh, modulate downward. Um, the next thing that I had planned to talk about may or, not, may or may not be affected by what we just talked about with the jobs report, mm -hmm. and that is affordability. Because we had oh, some okay. good news yeah, yeah, right. yeah. with affordability. Uh, First American's home price index showed a 4.1% uh, annual improvement in affordability for home buyers uh, in August of this year, which was the first increase since 2021. Wow. Which is a wow. long time to wait. Um, the reason why lower mortgage rates, which again may have yeah. turned yeah. this one upside well, down I mean, a little but, bit. But they, they, let's just, before you go on, interest rates were, the 30 year mortgage sure. was at 7.3% at the beginning of summer. So even at 6.55, I mean, you know, that's that's still a significant drop. Sure. So, so, so affordability will still have been improved. Okay. Um, it's just not the the rate of six point one one that we saw not more than two weeks ago. Sure. Yeah. Um, higher household incomes are a piece of this as well. So yep. household incomes rose by three point one percent. So that that helps offset things a little bit. Uh, and then slower price appreciation. Now, I, I we're gonna talk about this from a local aspect more so with our listener question actually. Okay. Um, these numbers are strictly national, so we'll stick to just national for the time yeah, being. Sure. Uh, because I don't necessarily think that this one, this factor plays as much of a role here in Rochester, okay. yeah. uh, where I think things have slowed down from where they maybe were, uh, but it's certainly not a, a, a reversal by no, any means whatsoever. No, no, all, all, we, we like to say that all those gains that people have enjoyed the past five years, those are locked in. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and so we, we have seen no erosion. There is no price uh, uh, reduction that, that's been playing out here. None. So, um, But some more of the numbers, uh, starter homes. I mean, think about 
the winners and the losers from the you know the game of real estate for the past several years. I mean, has there been a bigger loser, unfortunately, than the first time home buyer? Uh, just horrible. Yeah, it's been tough. It's been really, really tough. Actually, that was a really interesting. So, um, Channel Ten yesterday interviewed me for um, a segment. Um, oh, superstar! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Channel Ten. Um, so this a uh, very, very nice young wet behind the ears uh, ears uh, came uh, came to the house. Twenty one years old, and in the middle of the interview, she's interviewing me, and I mentioned affordability and how difficult. And literally, the interview stopped. Um, and she started to talk to me about how she, as a 21-year-old woman, no longer has, she's never had in her mind that she will have the opportunity or the privilege of being able to buy her own house. Ever? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, because affordability is just so... Out of control, yeah. Out of control. Now, hopefully for her sake and that of, of, of her friends and colleagues, hopefully that's going to change over the course of the next year or two as interest rates drop and... Um, as, uh, as, as incomes increase, so. Well, speaking of incomes, uh, in terms of starter homes, according to Redfin, which we like the reports, the reports are good. Redfin always right. nails it. Though, though they have the best reports um, uh, of, of any. I mean, I subscribe to a ton of these, you know, Inman and all these other uh, organizations. Redfin has the best data and is always presented really, really clearly, concisely, always an interesting read. So they stated that the annual income for a starter home, and they're qualifying a starter home as one of uh, $250,000, um, you need to make an annual income of $76,995, which is a small change, about 0.4%, but in, in the positive way of it is more affordable. Um, and that's the first time that that has happened, where there's been a change where it's actually more affordable <clears throat> since August of 2020. Well, so, so over so yeah. four years. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, one of the things I was reading a report this morning, I don't have the actual numbers, um, but an increasing number of states in the United States are starting to see inventory levels rise above uh, the levels that, uh, that existed pre-pandemic. Um, and uh, th they're forecasting, I think there are nine right now, um, and they're forecasting that there are another four that sometime in the next few months are going to flip also. So we're starting to see inventory re levels rise. Yeah. Um, and when that happens and as that happens, um, yeah, again, affordability should uh, start to be uh, should start to improve. Yeah, it is very uh, geographical where this is all happening. Yep. I mean, t cities like Tampa, right. um, there's been a 14% increase in affordability, which mm -hmm. is huge. Yep. Yeah. Denver, 12.4, Portland, 11.7. Um, but of course, there's the other side of the coin, and we'll get to that later in the podcast. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to bring up, because this is something that's being hotly debated right now, and it, it might seem like maybe it's uh, more of an inside real estate term and, and pulling the curtain back a little bit here, but the uh, clear cooperation policy oh, that has God. gone into effect. Oh my God. So this was implemented relatively recently, back in 2019, and it requires agents to list properties in an NAR affiliated multiple listing service within one day of marketing them. Um, they do allow you know, in-office deals where you can market that to whoever's in your brokerage. Uh, that's like the one exception they allow. Uh, but you're, I know you're not a fan of this. I'm not a fan of I'm, this. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of clear cooperation. Well, actually, we should probably explain what clear cooperation is. It, it basically, it, just to clarify a little bit, it basically states that a real estate agent, when they start advertising a property, in social media, in print media, YouTube, whatever the case may be, they have to add, they they have to make sure that that property goes live in the multiple listing service within 24 hours of that first. Ad Clock starts period. ticking. <clears throat> yeah, or else and you we, get a we, ticket. It, 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 well, I mean, we've been turned in. Like you know, when, when this first um, uh, started as a policy back in 2019, we were getting calls from the GRAR saying, you know, you're in violation of you know code whatever whatever, and we were just mystified by this. Nobody had told us that this change was, was, was taking place. Nobody told us this was, and so you know, we we got uh, we got three four phone calls. It, it's a ridiculous policy implemented by an antiquated and ridiculously incompetent uh, uh, National Association of Realtors. I mean, they're who, just- they're who, Who've shown it uh, <clears throat> so definitely recently. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. So- um, Have they need new legal counsel? Um, yeah, the, the, I mean, they, they just continue Weird. to have, they continue to have, I mean, the sexual harassment, you know, the, uh, that was playing, taking place, um, the, the, well, we don't need to get, you know, the, the, I mean, the DOJ settlement was terrible. Um, yeah, and, and now clear cooperation. So um, I did see something, I'm not sure if you saw, but uh, Inman had 
polled a bunch of agents and a slight majority of agents do want to see the policy done away with. And my gut tells me that the NAR doesn't want to tangle with the DOJ again. So more likely than not, even though the NAR strongly and firmly believes in this policy, my gut tells me that sometime in the next few weeks, this policy is going to be overturned uh, so that the, uh, the NAR doesn't find themselves once again uh, having to contend with the, the DOJ. Um, I mean, of, of course, the NAR wants this to stay in place because it's a control power move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just terrible. <laughs> so. um, well, and it it really it, it does hurt established agents as well because it, it it does open it up a little bit more, and and I guess it it makes it a little easier for newer agents to get involved with, right. with yeah, some of these true. deals. But at the end of the day, if it's coming down to what the consumer wants and the customer wants, yeah. isn't that our job? Well, I mean, you y- you know. I, we have the privilege of working with um, you know, some marquee name Rochesterians, um, a number of uh, public officials, and I mean, we, I, I just listed one for sale who would, th- th- this, this individual would have really, really appreciated uh, being able to sell this off market. But our ability to do so was, was hampered, was limited as a result of this, this particular policy. Yeah. Um, I mean, people fighting against her are saying it's a violation of privacy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Is that important in America? Yeah, well, that's a whole other topic of conversation. That's not a good other. But but I'm thinking about you know a good friend of of mine, um, very very well known Rochesterian, and a local reporter. I don't know, twelve years ago, mm-hmm. started publishing, uh, in, in a local um, uh, uh, publication and and on television. Photos of the interior of this guy's house. Oh yeah, um, which was well. Really... Then security issues come into play at that point well, too. Well, yeah. I mean, it's it's funny you should say that because actually, then as a result of this, this individual then ended up having two unmarked security cars um, at either end of the street for about a week and a half oh, after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just because of the invasion of privacy. So I, I I I do think that for all sorts of reasons, you know, most of them legitimate, but you know, frankly and honestly. And, and very selfishly, it, it benefits us also. Sure. Um, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that it's done away with, and I'm hoping that we can, uh, yeah, we can finally uh, just move beyond that policy. Agreed. Um, Want to talk about a little real estate agent drama? Yeah. A little sabotage here in Rochester. No, I wish. I no, wish it was. Okay. No, this okay. is actually in uh, in Sydney. Well, wait, 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 let's not go to Sydney. Well, why don't we do a, 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 a portion of every podcast on local real estate drama? Do you have anything good for us today? Uh, we, no? we we've not talked about this previously, so we'll have to we'll have to approve that before we can okay, go to, all right, go right, to the right, air. All right, with smart, it. smart. Oh, always, yeah, always the cautious one. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> but with this one, I mean, this is a petty move. What this person pulled. So um, Roger Roger Aga is the name of this agent. Okay, was planning on leaving his current company and starting a new brokerage. And what he did prior to leaving was altering the phone number by one single digit of 900 of his old company's clients. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. I mean, that's, that's dastardly right there. It's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's stupid. <laughs> and it's, well, dastardly. It's, it's juvenile. It didn't work out great for him. He has had his license revoked. He's repealing well, that right now. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, that's... That's his mean right there. Uh, that's, I mean, what did they think was going to happen? Right, yeah. They're, they're not going to notice that every single phone number is off by one? Yeah. Who, who could have done it? Was it, you said this person's name was Jill? <laughs> no, uh, Roger. Roger oh, okay. was the name. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's easy yeah. to mistake the two. It happens. <laughs> it happens all the time. All the time. How quickly, here's my question. How quickly could, if this happened to us, if someone was so awful and dastardly how quickly could ed our our cfo turn this thing around and fix it oh uh, once it was discovered yeah five days oh, six no, days no. oh no ed could honestly have this resolved in 10 minutes just a spreadsheet i, I mean I, I honestly like yep. he would this this guy is he's like rain man he like he, he would just he would figure out what the problem was oh it's off by one digit he would export that column uh, to a new spreadsheet that he would make, and then he would just add one. He, he would just add one. So you know, it's basically you know, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is the phone number. Figured out. He would just it would be four, five, six, eight. It would, <laughs> would be every you know, and then he would just add one to every. Yeah, he's he's just brilliant. I just love that guy. Um, and everybody, everybody, I hope everybody knows how much I love. God, he is the. 
best. He is just awesome. He is great. Every, everything about that guy. I love him. Yeah. yeah. Um, listener question. If you have any questions about real estate, why is the jobs report ruining our lives? You know, maybe that's the next one for next week. <laughs> um, you can always reach out on the, the actual video. Um, you can reach out our social media, our email, come to the office, whatever you want to do. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as you get the question to us. Emily from Brighton wants to know. All right. And this ties into what we talked about earlier okay. with affordability. With news that some cities are seeing improved affordability, do you think areas around Rochester will see similar trends or will the local market behave differently? I mean, the short term answer to the question is right now we are not behaving at all like the national trend right. and not much has changed. And I don't think that is going to be any different until the inventory situation in our market specifically is improved. All right. So, so there are three levers that we got to talk about. And you mentioned yeah. them earlier, actually. So we've got to talk about uh, the price of the house. We got to talk about interest rates. Yep. And we've got to talk about um, wage and wages. So thankfully, wages have gone up, which is nice. Yep. Um, and interest rates have come down. Sort um, of. So yeah, yeah, they came in until yeah until this morning, um, and um, and then we're seeing that the cost of homes is still increasing, but we're not seeing the value of property increase year over year by you know ten, twelve, fourteen percent. Sure. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see, but I, I do think there will be some improved affordability. But I do think you're right. I mean, until every week I say the exact same thing until. The federal, the state, and local governments, through, until, until, until those three entities around the country come together and begin figure out ways for local builders to actually put more dirt or more, more shovels into dirt and start putting up more roofs, we're, we're going to continue to have this problem of, uh, of property values just increasing beyond the reach of, of many, many Americans. It's not going to fix itself magically. No. no for sure. And, and I love to say that even if that were resolved today, it's still three years before it's going to have any impact because of the amount of time that it's going to take for uh, builders to, uh, to get approval from town boards um, until all the site work is done. And then until, I mean, it takes, you know, what, six, eight, nine months for a single family residence to be erected. Sure, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. Unless you're Molly on our team who just bought some land and that property has got to go up in five months. That's what I've heard. Five oh. months. Well, okay. <laughs> I have um, not heard that. One of the things that I think is going to be interesting and it might be a little bit different in 2025 is that these people that are sitting on, on the, the golden handcuffs, as we've said, mm -hmm. yep. um, some have been doing so for the past four years. There comes a time where yep. you have to sell. Yes, yes. And you've been waiting four years and you've had uh, three more children. Yep. And your two bedrooms not going to hack it. You right. need to get yeah. a three bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. We are going to begin to see a little bit more of that just naturally. Yes. And then obviously, again, if we're able to, able to get rates under control and get right. them down a little bit more, a little closer to those numbers that people have locked into, that's going to open things up as well. But again, to open it up to the level that we need to even come close to evening out the market, let alone turn it into a buyer's market, is just, in my opinion, so much that it seems years and years and years and years yeah, away. I, I, I agree. No two ways about it. So, so Emily, I mean, I don't know. Any, any, any advice for Emily? By now, quite honestly. I, I agree. I mean, and we've said it over and over and over again. Um, and in fact, um, the, the Chamber of Commerce um, j just last week had a small panel of agents um, and they were asking all questions about all, all sorts of questions about uh, the people that the chamber is bringing in from outside of the area. And one of the things that I brought to their attention, they keep using the language and they kept asking, are there areas of Rochester where one uh, can buy a house without overpaying? And, and their, their assumption and, and, and their assertion in making and using this language is that if somebody buys a house now, they're overpaying for the house. And I, I just, I had to correct them you know, a couple of times saying, People have been saying that, but if you were saying that four years ago, and if you had not purchased, you would have lost out on the 50 or 60% increase in, in, in the value of property over the next few years, and that increase is going to continue. So yes, do you today have to spend probably $25,000, $35,000 over list price in order to purchase property? Yeah, it doesn't mean you're overpaying though. Yeah. You're paying market value. And, and especially depending on how long you plan on staying in that house, right, you're right, not yeah. going to be underwater yeah. uh, when it comes time to sell. Uh, I mean, we, I don't know how many clients have turned in less than a year, a couple of years, mm -hmm. 
made profits. Oh yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah actually, um, for years, I mean, for decades, I was selling real estate, and somebody would come and say, "Well, I just bought my house two years ago. I just bought my house three years ago," and I'd be like, "Oh my god." And, and so the number, the cutoff number for several decades was you needed to reside in your residence for a minimum of three years before you could sell it um, and actually not have to come up with cash out of pocket in order to uh, in, in order to move on. Sure. Um, that's no longer the case. Yeah. I mean, one, one year after you're purchasing, you're probably able to um, pay all of your closing costs and not have to come up with cash out of pocket. And well, maybe even go. have some thereafter yeah, to enjoy. So. Anything else before a little celebrity real estate? No, let me fire up my iPad. Um, anything good for us today? Uh, a couple of good. One kind of sucks, I'll be honest. But listen, I don't, I don't list the, the celebrity real estate, so I have no control over what's out there. I just find it. Um, did you see the Wall Street Journal today? I, almost, I should have called it to did your not attention. Look, no. um, Wall Street Journal uh, ran an article on Kanye's old house. We talked about it, I think, last yes. week. Um, the one that he just completely gutted, and there's, it is just a yeah, cinder well, they, block. They, they use the word destroyed. Um, and it did sell, and the guy who purchased it um, is somebody who was in prison for manslaughter. Oh! And then there's a photo of this guy. I'm like, dude, how the hell did he did want you... it to feel like a prison because he, he got used to it? Well, no, he, he's buying it to, 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 to renovate it and flip it. Ah. And I'm thinking, how the hell did you end up with like the twenty million dollars that it was going to cost to buy? The, like, it's it's all rather a, a, a great mystery to me. So, wild. That's yeah, wild. Yeah. So, all right, let me fire this up. All right, the first one, not necessarily a celebrity uh, seller by any means, but the property itself I, I thought you might find interesting, Mark. This is a 24,000-square-foot mansion in Great Falls, Virginia, known as Chateau de Lumiere, and it's uh, found a potential buyer. After being on the market for nearly a year, it was listed at $11.8 million dollars. This property was reportedly owned by a, a Saudi oh. prince. All right, so I finally figured this up. Wow. It features... Well, it, it looks like something owned by a Saudi it, prince, doesn't it? It, it is, is gar garish? Is that um, a, the word? The well, use? Not, 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 not if you're Louis Couture. <laughs> Eight bedrooms, 13 bathrooms, sits on 5.5 acres. Uh, this one was purchased back in 2017, actually, for $12 million. So it took a bit of a hit. This, uh, this, this Saudi prince never lived in it. He became the uh, ambassador to the U.S. Uh, from Saudi Arabia uh, later and uh, never lived in this home. But wow. thoughts on this? I mean, the marble, the European finishes. Um, How many chandeliers do you see? 27? Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, it... it... Listen, if, you, if you're a prince, like, you would be very, very comfortable living here. Sure. A lot uh, of gold. Yeah, yeah, lots of, you know, I mean, yeah. You know who else would be really, really comfortable living here? Who? Donald. Yeah, true, yes. I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he re, yeah, it's just over the top. It's, it's ostentatious. Um, and, and honestly, the exterior very much looks like Versailles. Um, yeah, um, yeah, not, not, not for me. Okay, I, yeah, yeah. I, I prefer something that's a little, a little, a little more, calmer, a little more simple. Yeah, a little, a little, yeah. little more neutral. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and, unless, of course, you know, I, I, I wanted to. Like get a string quartet and hold a ball. Then, 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 this <laughs> yes. would be just just perfect. Yeah, um, it's okay. got some got some eyes wide shut vibes to it. That's for sure. Oh, there we go. Oh my god. Uh, the Mark next Crand you know that, that is one of Mark Crandall's favorite movies. I learned this recently. Mark Crandall loves that film. That uh, film is creepy. The <laughs> the latest uh, the next Crand one. Crandall, who's like you know like I, like you talk to Crandall, you like you know you want to like have a, a I don't know a bag of Oreos and like you know a glass of milk. Yeah. Because uh, he's just that kind of guy, and sure. like you know, and then he's got that dark underside. Hey, you know. Yeah. Like, like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, oh, the next Zoe. one. Okay. Got a it. Avatar star Zoe Saldana has listed her Beverly Hills mansion for the fourth time, uh, and she's actually knocked 4.5 million off the price. Uh, it was listed in September of last year for 16.5. Current new price is 11.995 after multiple price cuts. Uh, this estate is in the Gate Garden Hidden Valley Estates. It's got five bedrooms, seven bathrooms, a designer kitchen, luxury finishes. But it kind of meh. M meh, a bit right? anodyne, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, not. Are you not, probably not surprised that it's been on the market for yeah, four it's, different it's, it's just it's, it really is just meh. Um, so um, yeah, nah, not, not much about this, no. Let's 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 just set the house aside for a minute. Yeah, I don't know anything about her. Have you seen her in anything? I mean, is she? I, I know Avatar. That's about it. Okay. Um, I mean, I saw Avatar. Like, I don't even remember her. I don't know. She's probably blue. So, so you know. So, so, right, so I guess that says a lot. Like, you're right. Um, yeah. Um, I guess that says a lot about the like. 
she to me is just meh. Yeah. House is meh. Matches. So, you know, yeah, yeah. So, is this, so the house is reflection. Is this like her, the phenomenon yeah. of when people have pets and their pets look like the owners? It's the the house reflects the the individual. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the next one oh, you're gonna love. Oh, oh here we go. Here All we go. right, Gene Simmons uh, of Kiss. Uh, his former mansion is listed for thirty nine million dollars after a pretty wild, over the top uh, wow. makeover. So he and his wow. wife Shannon Tweed Simmons bought the property in nineteen eighty six. For one point three million dollars. This is beautiful. Uh, so this is Beverly Hills. Um, Shocking. They expanded. <laughs> they expanded and updated the mansion back in two thousand, giving it a European style feel. Not quite to the the Saudi prince's uh, taste, but still, you know, it's ornate chandeliers, dark wood accents. They sold the home back in uh, twenty twenty for twenty two million dollars, um, or they listed it then. They actually ended up selling it the next year for sixteen million, and then who the person that bought it did a complete remodel of this home. And now it's being relisted for $48 million. It, it, you know, I mean, it is. Well, all right. So, so th- this explains a lot because I thought that this was the house that he most recently lived no. in. And he was selling it. And I'm thinking. This is the makeover. C- c- okay. Because he's not somebody that I look at and say, yeah, this is a man of good taste. Does, does it match? Uh, yeah, 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 yes. So, so, so now that I know that this was not his it's residence. Not and giant he- tongue art hanging <laughs> off the walls. <laughs> There, well, speaking of art, though, it looks like there's a really, really spectacular Jeff Kuhn sculpture in the foyer. There we go. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, you, you caught that, didn't you? Oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. always on the lookout for, uh, for Kuhn's. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I, th- th- this, is, this is a beauty. Actually, what celebrity that we have spoken about in the past, okay. who it looks, like, um, it looks like a renovation done by... Ellen. Wilson. Yeah, it, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. It, it, it very much has that, like... Really clean line, really, really um, beautiful, sophisticated, um, classic. It's, it's very classic. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it's, it's, this is a gorgeous house. It is. I mean, sixteen thousand three hundred ninety square feet, seven bedrooms, eleven bathrooms. Uh, the outdoor area, the pool is pretty incredible, and it uh, it fits thirty cars. If you oh, want to well, well, throw a nice course. party, what? again wow. for one of those eyes wide shut parties, you can get thirty <laughs> people in. <laughs> Um, we'll have to find out who who or who owns the, the eyes eyes wide shut residence. I mean, it's, good it's, question. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's um, Crandall. He probably knows. Yeah, he yeah he probably does. Yeah, yeah. He did. Did you know that he was actually an extra in that film? <laughs> Which mask was he wearing? <laughs> so, All right. Anything else? Um. Well, if anybody wants to see photos of uh, Zoe uh, Saldana's, uh, you know. <laughs> Really the one you're most excited about? A- anodyne r- a residence. The milk um, toast? Yeah, yeah, Alex will have that um, uh, posted to our uh, to our video feed of this uh, podcast. Okay. Uh, but, but really, it really would be. Actually, you know what? Just blow past the first two. Um, the first it, one, I mean, it's worth seeing. Now that you want to uh, live uh, there. Uh, all right. You know what? Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you like, you know, ostentatious, over the top, you know, Donald Trump, like, you know. Sure. Yeah, schlocky residences. Then, then, schlocky. Then, 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 yes, then, then definitely check it out. Okay. But 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 it really is uh, worth checking out uh, the Gene Simmons uh, yeah. property. Yeah. Again, if you're listening to the podcast, we are doing a video podcast now as well. If you're watching it, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, anything else before we uh, go weep about this jobs report? No, no, okay. no. Uh, good, good, uh, good episode. Thanks for getting us ready. Yeah. All right. Well, as always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again next time.